Okay, today I'm going to be showing you how to set up Xenia Dashboard. This is a fairly simple guide, but we're going to go through the entire process for this. So for this tutorial, we're going to need the Xenia Dashboard itself, which I'm going to show you how to get in a minute. We're also going to need an additional file, which is ABGX360, and we're of course going to need some games. Now, first of all, then what we're going to do is head over to this GitHub page, and this is where we can actually download this front end so this is going to act like a really glossy version of Xenia you're going to see for yourself in a minute how cool this is so what we're going to do is download the latest release of Xenia dashboard just here under releases and if we scroll down we can download Xenia dashboard.exe just here I've already downloaded this and it's on my desktop so here's Xenia Dashboard. What I'm gonna suggest doing right here is just creating a new folder. So right click, new folder, and call this whatever you like. I'm gonna just call it Xenia. And what I'm gonna do from here is just drag and drop Xenia Dashboard inside of that folder. I'm also gonna drag and drop an ISO file of Forza Horizon inside of Xenia 2. Go inside of Xenia, and from here, I'm gonna create a new folder and just call this games. I'm gonna then drag my Forza Horizon ISO into the games folder. Okay, so next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is just open up that Xenia dashboard.executable. Just double left click. Okay, so the first thing we're going to see is the dashboard itself in the background, but we're also going to get a warning here. The CLI version is required. It's going to tell us exactly what we need just here. And this is what I mentioned just a minute ago about the additional ABGX360 file. Now, you've actually got a download link just here, so you can go ahead and download that. But for now, what we're going to do is just go to I understand downloading CLI. And if I just close that here, so for now, I'm going to press my Windows key and right click and close window. Now, within the Xenia folder that we just created, we've actually got a couple of new folders appearing here since opening up the dashboard. So what we're going to do then is go into the assets folder, into the bin folder and into the win folder. And it's in the win folder just here that you need to actually extract the abgx360.exe file. So what we're going to do is just drag and drop it or extract it into that assets bin win folder. And that's it. So we no longer need the zip folder of abgx360. We can just go ahead and delete that one. Now, what we're going to do next is actually take a look at the app data folder. Let me show you what I mean by this. If I go to this PC and go into my C drive, if we go into the users folder, and in my case, it's the Jamie folder, of course, whatever you name your computer, you're gonna see it just here. So Jamie, and from here, we're gonna find the app data folder. If we go into Roman, now, right at the bottom of here, we're going to find Xenia dashboards. So this is where a lot of things are installed to. So if you need to delete anything or anything else you might want to do with this, then guaranteed it's going to be located here. So I thought I would just mention that. So what we're going to do next then is actually get set up with Xenia dashboards. So we're going to open up Xenia Dashboard. Now, as it stands, Xenia Dashboard doesn't contain a Xenia emulator. This is purely a front end at the moment, but we can actually download Xenia from this. So if I use my cursor keys, I'm going to go over to system settings and you can actually use a controller with this. I find my Nintendo Switch controller works fine too. If you're using a keyboard like me, just press the enter button. And that's going to bring you into the settings menu. From here, I'm just going to make sure that core configuration is highlighted. If I left click there. Now from here, I recommend using the cursor keys. And once one of these is highlighted, just hover over it. And you can then left click to go into one of these options. But we're going to download the Xenia Canary emulator from here. So again, I'm going to use my cursor button just to go down. And we're then going to hover over and left click on Xenia Canary Windows Downloader. Left click. And that's going to download the very latest version of Xenia Canary. So as we can see, we've now got the latest version. 
What we're going to do next is actually point this to the game folder that we've already created. So just by using the cursor key, I'm going to go up to game folder, left click, and just here I'm going to point this to my games folder. Now by default it's already gone to that destination. If not, then we obviously need to go to desktop. We're going to go to the Xenia folder and just left click and highlight the games folder which has got your ISO games in it. Go to select folder. That's now put in place. So what I'm going to do is press the escape button. Escape button again. And if I then use my cursor buttons, if I go to game library and press the enter button, and here it is. Here's Forza Horizon, and this is ready to play. If I just test this, so let's check this out. And that's then gonna act like it's got a real disc in it. As you can see, we got a really cool picture of Forza Horizon here. If I just open this one, and that's gonna open up Xenia Canary. We can, of course, use a full screen mode just here. If we go to display, full screen. And I'm gonna very quickly create a new save profile for this. And I'm gonna call this just Jamie. And create, and okay. So if I go to sign in, Okay, once that's done, I'm then going to select my Just Jamie profile and OK. And as you can see, that's working just perfectly from there. Now, what we can actually do is customize this front end. If I go up to the Xenia user just here, left click, I can actually customize this by putting a very nice photo of myself sporting a Commodore bag. Or in fact, I'm actually going to use this kinky one just here, which is a photo taken in a strange shop in Whitby. Double left click, and I've now got that image. Now we can actually put a new wallpaper in place. I'm using my controller, and I'm going to press the LB and start button to go into settings. And as we can see, this is going to open up this menu here. But we don't necessarily need this for now, so I'm going to press escape to come out. And I'm going to scroll over to system settings. And it's just here, I can actually apply a new wallpaper. So if I go to background wallpaper, I'm going to randomly select a picture from here. So let's just go and select my desktop backgrounds for this. And there we go, very cool stuff. If I press escape to come out, there we go. We've also got sound settings, and we can actually add some background music to this. I'm guessing that we need MP3 files for this. But generally, this is the dashboard setup, and of course, the more ISO games you put into your games folder, they're going to appear right in this folder here. So you can just select a game and go ahead and play. If I press the RT button, or the RT button equivalent on my Switch controller, if I then press the RB button, I can select various different images just there to use. And that's it for today's Xenia dashboard setup guides using Xenia emulator. Very cool stuff and I really hope to see some more progress coming on this new dashboard front end. So anyways, if you liked today's video, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming retro content here on my channel, Just Jamie. Again, thanks for watching and until next time, stay retro.